Afternoon. I know a lot of folks are on edge right now as we kind of await each and every update from the National Hurricane Center on what is still now Tropical Depression 9. Hurricane hunters are currently investigating it and looking at their data. They are still clearly indicating that center of circulation where the Hurricane Center is saying that it is. I bring that up because this is still a fairly sloppy system. It's kind of almost elongated with almost several little swirls showing up. So the one that the hurricane hunters are investigating is the center that is being depicted by the National Hurricane Center, but it's possible that we may see a new center try and form only because we have currently some fairly decent wind shear on the western side of the storm. That's kind of keeping it a little bit more, as I mentioned, elongated and rather sloppy. So it is not a rapidly intensifying system at this time. So it's still fairly unorganized. And because it is still fairly unorganized, there is still a high likelihood that we may see some shifts in the computer models. In fact, the new track from the National Hurricane Center has kind of shifted fairly dramatically. We'll talk about that in just a second. But as I mentioned, it is still a depression with winds of 35 miles an hour motion toward the northwest at 14 miles an hour. We would like to see it moving as fast as possible. Now again, where the hurricane hunters are currently is where the hurricane center is saying that the center of the storm is. However, do you see any real thunderstorm development around that center? No, there almost looked like there was a little bit of a rotation north closer to Cuba, and that is also where we're starting to see some thunderstorm development firing off. But you also watch on the satellite here as all of the clouds are kind of quickly moving up toward the north. That's that wind shear that is keeping this fairly elongated, not a very well defined center of circulation, and also preventing those thunderstorms from completely wrapping around said center. Again, Again, if that's the center, maybe it's a little bit more north. So the computer models right now are basing the model or basing the center of the storm here. If that shifts later on, maybe later tonight, we start to see more convection thunderstorms developing around a new center and perhaps that wind shear kind of forces a new center to try and develop farther north. That would also dramatically change the computer model. So here is the new track. As we go through past Cuba, we have a tropical storm moving into the Gulf of Mexico late Friday, early Saturday, and then kind of quickly ramping up to a hurricane and then becoming possibly a again. This is just the preliminary data coming in from the National Hurricane Center from the models and whatnot as a category two. There are still some models indicating that this could be a category three, and I'll explain why in a moment at landfall. But notice, as I said, there was kind of a dramatic shift, not away from Louisiana, not that dramatic, but this is the reason why I like showing the center line because though I don't want you to just focus solely on that as where the storm is going to go. Remember, it could go anywhere within the cone, which basically at this time encompasses the entire state of Louisiana. But I kind of like to use it as almost a guideline as or, or kind of a guiding mark as earlier. It was right over Vermilion Bay. Now it has kind of shifted rather dramatically off to the east. It's possible. It is possible that if that center may be gets adjusted a little bit more to the north, we could see this whole track start moving farther and farther to the east. Again, this is not written in stone by any means. We are, yes, at a depression, but for all intents and purposes, this is still a very unorganized depression. It's almost like when it was still an invest, maybe a little bit more organization with that uh, closed circulation, which even that is kind of a loose term, just looking at the data from the hurricane hunters. So this is still a fairly unorganized system, and thus the computer models are going to struggle with its future. So the forecast track, and again, these are the sweet uh, computer. This is the computer model suite that the hurricane hunter or the hurricane center, excuse me, uses to forecast and kind of develop their track. This is still kind of that bullseye location in South Central Louisiana that we have seen really since going back to last night. Is this going to change? Very possible, especially if we do see a new center form. So that's kind of what we're rooting on right now. Not that we wish this upon anyone, but if we do see perhaps a new center form, then perhaps these models all also shift a little bit more to the east. Here's what's going on right now with the storm. The upper low that is actually helping to increase our rain chances here today is why we had a wetter day and why we're going to have a wetter day tomorrow. 
That's actually kind of gotten deep into the Caribbean. That's providing that strong wind shear that you see on the western side of the storm. So at the moment, it's kind of helping to rip the storm apart, or at least if nothing else, keep it fairly weak. That is going to change, however, as we go through the forecast. Notice that wind shear in the brighter reds and yellows that starts to go away and we start to see kind of weak wind shear as it moves into the central Gulf and certainly toward the northern Gulf of Mexico. Not only is the wind shear going to be fairly light, it is going to be moving over some very deep, very warm water. This is the loop current. You may kind of remember that from Katrina. Now that does not guarantee this does not guarantee that a storm is just going to explode in strength. You can go back just a couple of weeks when Grace moved toward Mexico. If you remember Grace, it moved over this incredibly deep, warm water and didn't do anything. And then it moved into actually less conducive water in the Bay of Campeche, and that's where it exploded in strength. So just showing sea surface temperatures can be misleading because storms are always going to move over very warm water. That doesn't necessarily mean they're just going to explode in strength. This is where they gain their energy from, but there's a lot that has to happen in the uh, mid and upper parts of the atmosphere, so that will also help to make the storm explode in strength. So just because it moves over the loop current does not mean it'll explode. Yes, we saw that back in 2005 with Katrina. That's kind of when everyone was talking more about the loop current. Fast forward a few years, Hurricane Gustav moved over the loop current, didn't do anything. So this again doesn't mean a whole lot. What I'm showing you though is that it will be moving over very deep warm water and it appears as though the upper atmosphere over the Gulf of Mexico will be more conducive for potentially doesn't guarantee it for potentially a rapidly intensifying hurricane. Rapidly intensifying hurricanes are nearly impossible to forecast. All we can do is show you that the ingredients are right and that that is a potential. And really at this moment, we're not taking any option off the table of what Ida may eventually do, which again, it is not Ida right now. Big Ridge of high pressure is still fairly dominant across much of the southern United States and out in the Atlantic. It's going to be this anchored position in the Atlantic that we're going to watch very closely. What the models had been indicating is that it would stay parked right over North Carolina, which if that is the case, that would probably not be bad for us because if it were to follow more the outer periphery of this high, it may be more inclined to turn farther to our east. What the models have been hinting at is that that high will build inland a bit and kind of keep pushing the storm a little bit closer to southeast Louisiana. Well, what if that high doesn't build further inland in the United States and it stays parked over coastal North Carolina or maybe even out offshore? That would certainly allow the storm to turn much sooner and be moving more a little bit to our east. So that is still very much a possibility and something we'll be watching over the next couple of days. Now, as far as the forecast as it stands now, that's kind of what we have to base all of our decisions on. So as we get towards Saturday night, the risk of tropical storm force winds begins to increase. So you still have tomorrow. You still have Saturday to do anything that you need to prepare. And again, this may not be a storm that everyone has to leave for. It may be that low lying areas, areas out, certainly outside of the levee protection system, but inland and certainly farther north, it may not be something that we have to leave for. But this is the next couple of days that you have to prepare your home as we get towards Saturday night and then certainly on into Sunday, the probability of those tropical storm to then hurricane force winds greatly increases. Obviously, the strongest of the winds are going to be right near the center of circulation. But even at this track, which is trended closer to New Orleans, it does put us on what we call the dirty side. It's the wetter side. It's where the strongest winds are and where you're going to get that strong onshore flow, which is going to create a storm surge. The only positive for us is that it really is not going to be over the Gulf waters for very long. As I mentioned, moving into the Gulf by Saturday, by Monday night, it should already be inland. So you've got Saturday, Sunday and most of the day on Monday. So you do have three days, but it's not going to just sit over the Gulf, and that's what we're hoping on. Rainfall, we are going to see a surge of deep tropical moisture. That's that more heavy rain, and that is certainly going to be a threat to us as we get towards Saturday night, more so Sunday and definitely hanging on into Monday. Rainfall totals again. These are very rough estimates right now because there just is so much unknown. But at the moment, models are going with kind of a wide swath of about seven plus inches of rainfall and then maybe some pockets right along the coastline of about 10 
10 to 15. So at the moment, kind of looking at these colors, and I know sometimes they get a little bit more confusing, it looks like kind of a 7 to 10 widespread. That's going to cause some flooding with higher amounts possible. And again, that is a very, very rough estimate at this point and something that we're going to be able to analyze a little bit more as we get closer to the actual event. But as I mentioned yesterday, we don't have a whole lot of lead time. Again, we now have a name storm with a track and we're looking at a landfall potentially on Monday nights. You've got we're here Thursday. You've got tomorrow, uh, Saturday, and then by Sunday we'll start to see the weather worsen and then by Monday night a landfall and at that point Monday during the day you want to be indoors or gone if you need to and just wait it out and this is may hopefully something that we'll be able to just wait out very quickly as it does look like the storm is eventually going to get picked up by an upper trough and move away the models as i mentioned and i've been kind of digging into a lot of the different tropical models there isn't at the moment a single one that is not indicating a landfall in southeast or i should say southern louisiana whether that be south central or southeast louisiana this is the euro at 11 o'clock on sunday right off the coast or just along the shoreline and then the gfs has the storm already inland so these models actually have more of a sunday night going into monday so the timing could change if anything that may not be bad for us again less time over the gulf water so something we will be watching closely so what do you need to know right now the potential impacts will likely start as soon as early sunday rapid intensification is possible as i mentioned that is almost nearly impossible to forecast you may see some models kind of trending that way and really the best we can do is, is say that the ingredients are there and that is certainly a possibility but not a guarantee however if it was me, I would always prepare for the worst, and the worst could be a major hurricane at landfall. The environment over the Gulf is favorable. As I mentioned, you have the deep warm water. You're not going to have a whole lot of wind shear, so that would allow for a rapidly intensifying storm. Just because all the ingredients are there, kind of like tornado watches or severe thunderstorm watches, all the ingredients are there. Does it always happen? No, it doesn't always happen. But better to be safe than sorry and prepare for that eventuality. The forecast, as I mentioned, is not written in stone because this is still a very weak and unorganized storm. If you had a more defined center of circulation and you had a more uh, structurally sound storm, then the computer models would probably do a far more accurate forecast. With that said, they have been indicating southeast or south central Louisiana since last night, and they have trended the same today. Will that trend continue once we get the new model runs in later tonight at 10 o'clock? That's yet to be seen. We will see. Perhaps a new center tries to form and all of the models start shifting even farther to the east. Again, we don't wish this on anyone, but that would certainly be great news for us. So those are all the unknowns. And I know that gets very, very frustrating for folks because this is that more edge of your seat. I, I think a lot of folks do better when you know for certain that a major hurricane is coming. But at this point, we really just cannot say that for certain.